Thank you for joining me. This is Tim DeLay with using windowshomeserver.com and the BYOB podcast. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect for the first time to your Windows Home Server 2011. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is verify that your Windows Home Server 2011 is powered on and connected to the network. Once you've verified that, go to a PC connected to the same network and open up an Internet Explorer browser. You're going to want to connect to your Windows Home Server 2011 by entering in the name of the server slash connect. Do it as follows. My server is named microserver. Yours will be different, of course. Once you've connected, you'll see that you have two choices. You can either download software for Windows, or if you're on a Mac, choose the Mac link. Once you've clicked on the link, click on Run, and then click on Yes for any error or warning messages that come up with your system. Once we're connected to the network and through the Windows Home Server 2011, we'll be able to connect to the server, monitor the health, backup, and also do server administration. We're going to click on Next. Now this may take a couple of minutes depending on how systems uh, are updated. Uh, the network, uh, the Net Framework 4.0, uh, takes usually about 10 or 15 minutes the first time, but chances are you probably already got it. Click on Next. Enter in the password for your server 2011. Click on Next. Now this gives you the ability to change the description of your computer. Uh, this will be set up that's in here. If you want to know where this is done, you right mouse click on Properties, and then you can go to Advanced System Settings, and then go to Computer Name, and that's where that the computer description is actually stored. So if you wanted to do that, you could click on Change here. Uh, this just hooks it up for the server, so you can change it if you want or put in uh, the location. Click on Next. You also have the ability now to back the system up when it's sleeping uh, overnight or in hibernate mode, uh, I would suggest yes. If this is a computer you do not want to back up, then click on no, of course. Click on next. This is a totally optional uh, experience improvement program. So you can either click on yes, I want to participate, or no, I don't. I will leave mine on yes and click on next. And now it will download the connector software. Uh, this takes about a minute depending on your network speed, so be patient. Okay, we're now connected. Uh, at this point, you want to open up the dashboard to administer the server. So we're going to leave that checkbox on, then we're going to click on Finish. Now I can close out my browser window. We'll sign in using the same password that we just did. Again, this is the password that you uh, enter in when you first install Windows Home Server 2011. And now it'll load the dashboard. Uh, dashboard uh, will uh, open up a remote desktop session. It's a little different from version 1. Uh, this does take about 15 to 20 seconds to go through. Uh, that will be typically your, your standard time for a dashboard, whether you're online uh, or on a local network. So again, have patience. Now here we are for the first time. You can see here that we have uh, complete tasks for getting started, and then we have common tasks, such as have a user account, shared folders, etc. So just as our first connection here, we want to make sure that we're updated uh, with all of the latest updates from Microsoft, so make sure that that's checked. And then we're going to go to Users. Now this is the first time a user account has been added, so we're going to click on the right and click on Add a User Account. You can enter in the name. Now you want to enter in uh, the user account name. I would suggest using the name of the computer or the login that you're in now. You can see that mine is Tim, and then using the same password. It makes it easier to do the administration and to do the logins. Make sure your passwords match. Click on Next. Now here you have the ability to uh, allow access to the folders. Since this is my first account, I'm going to make sure that they all say Read Write. You can change these later, but you want to make sure that they say Read Write. Click on Next, and then here we have the ability to access the, uh, the server remotely. So what you want to do is you want to allow it to share folders, uh, computers, media. These are the ones that happen uh, through the remote web access. And since this is the first account, I want to make sure that I can access the server remotely. Uh, if this is like a guest account or for kids or something and you don't want them to access the server remotely, then uncheck it and click on Do Not Allow. 
click on create account it takes just a couple of seconds to access the files folders and settings and you've now created a new account for the user you can see now you can go to http and then the name of your server slash connect and then follow the instructions for doing uh, things at this point you can go through and create your additional users uh, if not you can close it out uh, however i would suggest setting your backup while we're in here so let's take a moment and do that we're going to click on computers and backup you can see now that this computer is now connected on the right hand side i'm going to click on customize backup for this computer i'm just going to do it while we're in here it just takes about 30 seconds we're going to add and remove backup items you can see here that it gives us a list of all of the drives that are on this computer I have a SSD and then a secondary drive. You can also see it has a system reserved, which includes the boot and the system volume information. Make sure that all of these are checked. If you didn't want to have a drive uh, that's backed up, for example, let's say you had a USB that's attached, you could uncheck it. But you wanna make sure that you have your system drive uh, and everything else checked here. Click Next, verify everything looks good. Click on Save Changes and now you're done. Again, you can see here that your backup is scheduled to run between 12 and 6 in the morning. That is the default. We can change those later on, but we are now completed and connected. The final thing we want to do is get our little greenhouse in the lower right-hand corner. To do that, you go to your Start menu, go to All Programs, scroll down to Windows Home Server 2011, and you have the Dashboard and the Launchpad. Click on the Launchpad. That will come up. Uh, it will log in using your same credentials. So again, since I had Tim and my password, it logged in. And you can do four things. You can either backup, access uh, via a browser, click on shared folders. That opens up the shared folders. We used to have the icon on the screen. Now we have the shared folders through the launch pad. Or we can enable the dashboard. So what I want to do right now before I do this is click my settings. And to do that, you click on this little box here, click on settings, and I have a couple of choices. I can either automatically or not automatically run the launch pad. I'll have mine to automatically log in uh, when I go into Windows. You can see I can also change the scope of the alerts being none, local, local, and network, and then the customer experience uh, improvement program. Now, when you want to do the scope of the alerts, if this is for like a wife or kids or someone that doesn't really care about the alerts, uh, and you can see I have a little green house here, you can leave that on none. If it's for you or someone who's going to administer uh, the server, you want to click on local and network and click on apply. Now, what that does over here, you can see it's starting to bring up some warning messages about the server uh, what hasn't been backed up, what's been changed. And to do that now, you can see that I'll have my alert viewer here. So I've got these different uh, errors or alerts that are listed here. If I do not want to see that, again, I go to Settings, and I click on None, Apply, and my little house is green. This is similar to what we did before with version 1. And the final thing is, if you want to do anything, uh, right mouse click on the greenhouse, and you can either open the launch pad, the dashboard, or view alerts, or you can even exit out. So there we go. Check back with using windowshomeserver.com for more information on Windows Home Server 2011.